yet no indication what was going to happen. I've come, I've come down today expecting uh, a nice five aside and what have you. Uh, German call for me at 10.30. They told me reluctantly, I felt reluctantly, that uh, they decided to dispense with my services and they took the results over the last few months. And, um, okay, I accept that totally. Ron Atkinson breaks the news which rocked British football to the core. His five-year reign as United manager was over and taking his place, Alex Ferguson, the Scot with a Midas touch, who led Aberdeen to 10 trophies in eight years, including the European Cup Winners' Cup. And today, both men feature on the show. Ron Atkinson joined Jim and I live in the studios to discuss his life and times as United boss. And Elton Wellesby has a morning report on Ferguson only hours before his debut match against Oxford United at the Manor Ground. Ron, nice of you to come in, and uh, how do you feel? Um, bored. I'm out of work. <laughs> I've been out of work for two days and I'm fed up. Well, you're on this show, aren't you? You've got, <laughs> got a job already. I'm bored with everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> can, how condolences, Ron, but in your heart of hearts, because you, you said you let your heart rule your head in the summer, was you half expecting it? Well, when I got down there on Thursday, my boots weren't out for the five aside, Jim, and you had a problem, yeah. 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 No, um, obviously you live and die by results. I thought a few mo a few weeks ago we turned the corner. You know, we had a bad start. We turned the corner. We put a string of results together that looked as if we were just going to get back uh, to start to make a climb up the league. Then all of a sudden uh, we got the milk or oh, the Littlewoods Cup as it is now. And yeah. uh, was that the straw that brought a cow's back? Or? I would have thought so. Yeah, I would have yeah. thought if we'd stayed in, they'd have, they'd have stayed with it a little bit longer to see. Um, because I don't think that the club genuinely wanted to do it. Because it's, it's always unfair, isn't it, really, when you look back and think that it's one game in five seasons that might have actually made the decision. That was the opening goal there, Ron, if, in case you weren't watching the other night. <laughs> <laughs> but this, yeah. this is where I think, you, you, to me, whenever I've seen you, you've had problems here, which is in the middle of defence. You never seem to have been able to have got the ball away. Is that a fair criticism, do you think? I've heard you say that in the past, Jim. Yeah. And I've had to come back and say for, I think it's three out of the last five years, we've had the best defensive record in the country. I know, that's what I've never been able to understand. Um, but... If there's one thing that I think the club may regret, and uh, circumstances were wrong at the time, it's not buying Terry Butcher. I, yeah. think that's, um, I think that's an important thing. You wanted to buy Terry Butcher? Yeah, so we trailed him for close on 12 months, and when he became available, I honestly thought that he would be... Um, he would be the player that this yeah, why, why didn't he get more? Well, the cash flow at the time was a little bit, uh, a little bit low, and these are circumstances that uh, govern management. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, well, you've had good times, obviously. You know, looking back over your, your five years at the club, the FA Cup. You know, the, when you won it the first time against Brighton. I mean, that must have been great days for you. Yeah, that was smashing. Um, it was a little bit of anti-climax at first because it was a replay. Yes. You know, it, it was more like a, a big league game. Um, certainly. The second one against Everton, I would say that and the, the night we beat Barcelona and maybe the night we knocked uh, Liverpool out the cup replay were the main highlights. So this was a tough game for you because Everton uh, won the league, didn't they? Yeah, this one, but going yeah. really well at the time. Yeah, this, this uh, you know, we're down to 10 men. I'll tell you one thing about that goal, Ian, that's never been mentioned. The credit little strategy you have for that run. Uh -huh. Brilliant. I mean, that was oh, we couldn't believe that when he did that. And uh, we had one of the greatest nights of all time, I think, that night. That's so that's two cup wins, Ron. People say, well, it's easy to win the cup. I don't think it's easy to win the cup. You know, a lot of people don't have a cup winner's medal, that's for sure. A lot, a lot of people but, say about this league, it's easy to win the league, but there's not many managers over the last 20 years have won the league, have they? Not unless they've come from Merseyside. That's, that's right. right. Um, I'll tell you what, what, I've, what I maintain, to be champions of England, you have to be the European champions. Because if you have a look, the team that inevitably win the uh, first division in England, when we could play in Europe, yeah. inevitably went and won it, didn't they? Yeah. So, you, so you're saying that the team that wins the, the league in England are usually the best team in Europe anyway? Well, that's how it's worked out, mm -hmm. by and large, yeah. Uh -huh. And you, I mean, you're looking at that, the position wasn't too bad, was it? You know, they, I mean, you know you, three, a lot of managers three, would be very, very happy with that run. But at United, for some reason, the fans there, everybody seems to think that they're entitled to win the league. Do you feel it's, it's whipped up by the media or is it actually the fans themselves who are demanding the league? Uh, could be a little bit of both, Jimmy. Could be a little bit of both. I think possibly what happened last year, um, we went off to a flyer. Now, make no mistake, no one at the club, players, staff, myself, anyone got carried away with the fact when people were saying the league championship was over. Mm -hmm. And in a way, that probably became a little bit of a noose around our neck. Mm -hmm. Because if we didn't win it then, there was there was no way we were anything else but failures last year. Uh -huh. Now, you had a fantastic start, as we said. And then, funnily enough, in the last 13 games, you only won four of them. And you lost two in a row. 
at Old Trafford. One of them against Chelsea, I remember being at the game that evening. And, you know, it's games like this one where I thought on the night you'd played well, but you got caught. This goal right at the end of the game, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, well, again, you got caught straight down the old eye, diddle, diddle. Yeah. Yeah, right. That's actually the first goal. Oh, that's right. The first yeah, goal. This was just yeah. on, yeah. just after half time. Yeah. yeah. That's but, right. But you see what happened, if you remember that night, Ian? Six games left. That was the six games left of the season. If we'd have won that night, you know, we'd have gone top of the first division. You were yeah. sitting third at the time. Right? Uh, I remember we'd, that. Have, we'd have gone top, and it may well have been the thing. It may well have given us the impetus to go on. So, yeah. what, what what was it then? Do you think that sort of did you crack? Did the nerve in the team go, or what? If you're playing at home against Chelsea. You should pick up three points, shouldn't you? Played well that night. Yeah. 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 If he was there, that, that was one. Out. That was one of those when you know the, the little saying about you yeah, after a game you're gutted. I think yeah. everybody in the game. And there was a reaction on the on the Sheffield Wednesday That's game. Right. Wednesday. The players were so flat after that match because they put so much in. Yeah. It was like losing the semi-final virtually. Yeah. Well, over the the time you've been there, Ron, a lot of players have gone. A lot of players have come in. You know, and we we've got a, a little file here, the Atkinson file. This, these are the players that you've bought. You've bought a few, haven't you, there, Ron? I mean, a few quids worth coming up <laughs> somewhere down the line. Some good, some bad. I mean, I know. How, I mean, Olsen, do you, to me, he's never been a good buy for you, for instance. He's not possibly, really. he's got so much talent. Um, Receiver back, you're too dangerous. I'll tell you what, you watch this lad. You, you watch this lad. Make no mistake. What about Terry Gibson? Well, Terry Gibson has never had a chance through a set no. of circumstances. I know you rated him very highly. Yeah. Um, probably Terry Gibson's biggest problem this season has been the Frank Stapleton, who, quite honestly, we thought would possibly leave the club in the summer. Yeah. Frank stayed and has played as well as he's done at any yeah. given time. So somebody has to stay out. Yeah. Well, you didn't quite balance your books with the players that went out. But, I mean, it helped to, to recoup some of that. He was, uh, he was about, a million million. Quid, about a million quid down on the balance in uh -huh. the end. But, I mean, some of these players, obviously, you got rid of. You did very well. I mean, Gary Burst was obviously... Blimey, you did well there, didn't you? Getting rid of Butch for one and a half million. That was, that, that was a bit of a stroke run. And got criticised. He lost a lot of coffee on Brazil, though, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yes. And Mark Hughes, who obviously was your biggest uh -huh. uh, sell. Yeah, well, so, if you look, say for I say you look at the Alan Brazil situation. Yeah. I mean, we bought Alan Brazil to play alongside Frank Stapleton, mm -hmm. but there was an emergence of uh, Mark Hughes, yeah. which yeah. you can't believe. Yeah. You know, the choice was if we played Alan Brazil, we left uh, Mark Hughes yeah. there. Now, can I just ask a final question about what the papers call the Watergate? You know, the, the incident between Olsen and Moses. Now, Ron, that happens in all football training guys. We've all been involved in it. Tell me why you didn't come out and say the lads had a fight. Finish. Quite frank, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything at all about it. As it happens, it was, a, it was an internal affair. And I'd, I'd prefer at this moment in time to keep it like that. But there were people there, like there were Danish journalists there as well. No mistake, I'll tell you what, only four people know exactly what happened that day, regardless of what did happen. I'll tell you who it was, the two participants, Chris Turner possibly and myself. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a funny little thing about that, I probably started it. We're having a very fierce five aside. I cracked Kevin Moran. Yeah. It was a bit of a, yeah. I'm going to say cracked him, yeah. whacked into him. There's a bit of a repercussion between Robson and um, Norman Whiteside, and he sparked up into that little episode, which, as you say, happens. Oh, it's, it's a daily occurrence in okay. football, isn't it? Well, there you are. Okay, well, Ron Atkinson is no longer United manager, but what about Alex Ferguson, the manager?